What if everything around us, stars, galaxies, planets, and even the emptiness between them, is actually conscious? What if consciousness isn't just a product of the human brain, but something fundamental, present everywhere? This hypothesis, known as panpsychism, suggests that even the tiniest particles of matter might have a basic form of feeling. In this video, we will explore this intriguing idea and dive into what scientists, philosophers, and popular thinkers have to say about it. You'll learn why some believe that consciousness is a fundamental force of nature and why this theory sparks so much debate. We will also discuss how this idea intersects with quantum physics, cultural concepts, and even science fiction. And at the end, I'll ask you a question that might change your perspective on reality. Before we begin, hit the subscribe button and give us a like. It helps us create more videos like this. Now, let's dive into the depths of the universe's consciousness. Panpsychism is a philosophical hypothesis that sounds both simple and extraordinary. Consciousness is inherent in all matter in the universe. But this doesn't mean that rocks or chairs have thoughts and emotions like we do. Think of it differently. At the core of any matter, there might be a tiny seed of awareness, something so basic that we can hardly recognize it. Let's explain this through an analogy. When you look at the brain, you see a complex network of neurons. They work together to create consciousness as we understand it, our inner world. Now imagine that every atom or particle in nature also has something similar. Not consciousness as we know it, but a small element of awareness that might combine with others to create something greater. This idea might seem strange, but it's far from new. Panpsychism has roots in ancient philosophy. For instance, Aristotle believed that everything in nature has a soul or a principle of life. He didn't refer to consciousness in the human sense, but implied that life and motion are inherent to matter itself. Later, in the 17th century, philosopher Gottfried Leibniz proposed that the world is made up of monads, tiny spiritual entities, each reflecting the universe. Spinoza, another prominent philosopher, thought that everything in the universe is a manifestation of one unified being, God or nature. For him, consciousness and matter were just two sides of the same coin. In his view, even the smallest part of the universe participated in this unity in some way. Today, panpsychism is gaining renewed attention because we still haven't answered the fundamental question. Where does consciousness come from? Many scientists believe it arises from complex processes in the brain, but proponents of panpsychism argue that this view is too simplistic. What if consciousness doesn't emerge from matter, but has always been present at its foundation? So, panpsychism offers an intriguing perspective. We're not just a part of the universe, we might also be part of its conscious component. And that raises a fascinating question. Could everything around us be, in some way, a little bit alive? So, we've explored how panpsychism is an idea rooted in philosophy, suggesting that consciousness is a fundamental part of existence. But what does science have to say? Can we measure or even test this hypothesis? At first glance, consciousness seems like a strictly human phenomenon tied to the brain. Yet modern theories are painting a broader picture. One such theory is the Integrated Information Theory, or IIT. Proposed by scientist Giulio Tononi, it suggests that consciousness arises wherever there is a high degree of integrated information. But what does that mean? Imagine a computer network processing enormous amounts of data. While this network is complex, it isn't conscious. However, if the information within the system becomes so interconnected that it can't be divided into parts, we might begin to call it conscious. Proponents of IIT argue that consciousness isn't exclusive to living beings. It could exist in any sufficiently complex system. For instance, the universe as a whole is an incredibly intricate system with countless interactions. Perhaps its consciousness is so vast and incomprehensible that we simply cannot measure it. How do you measure something that transcends your understanding? Now let's turn to quantum physics, a field that often forces us to rethink our understanding of reality. One of the central questions in quantum theory 
is the role of the observer in collapsing the wave function. When a particle is in superposition, it exists in multiple states at once. Yet, the moment we measure it, it seems to choose one of those states. Some scientists and philosophers suggest that this process of choosing is tied to consciousness. Now imagine that consciousness isn't confined to the human brain, but instead extends across the cosmos. Could it be that the very existence of the universe is linked to its ability to observe itself? And if so, might consciousness be a quantum effect permeating all of existence? These ideas might seem extraordinary, but they challenge us to think, where does science end and philosophy begin? Or perhaps the boundary between them is just an illusion. We've explored how modern scientific theories present unusual perspectives on the nature of consciousness and its potential presence at the foundation of the universe. But if we dig deeper, these questions lead us into the realm of philosophy, where debates about the essence of consciousness and its explanation have raged for centuries. One of the leading contemporary philosophers grappling with this mystery is David Chalmers. He introduced the concept of the hard problem of consciousness, one of the most profound intellectual puzzles of our time. The essence of this problem lies in understanding how physical processes in the brain, such as neural activity or chemical reactions, give rise to subjective experiences. Why don't we simply react to stimuli like machines, but instead experience complex phenomena such as joy, pain, or love? Chalmers suggests that consciousness might not be something that emerges from matter, but instead could be a fundamental feature of the universe, just like space, time, or energy. He likens this to electromagnetism. Once mysterious and misunderstood, it was eventually accepted as a basic component of reality. Perhaps consciousness is another such fundamental property that we are only beginning to grasp. However, panpsychism has its critics. Many dismiss the idea as overly speculative and lacking in practical evidence. Skeptics argue that philosophical concepts like the hard problem of consciousness don't offer real methods for studying the nature of reality. They believe such questions should be addressed solely within the framework of science, grounded in testable hypotheses and empirical experiments. But should panpsychism be dismissed just because it cannot yet be measured? The history of science is full of examples where seemingly absurd hypotheses eventually unlocked new frontiers. For instance, quantum mechanics, once considered an abstract oddity, became the foundation of modern technology. Furthermore, panpsychism doesn't contradict our understanding of the world, it may in fact enhance it. If we accept consciousness as a fundamental property, it could lead to deeper insights into the nature of reality and our place within it. This perspective also raises intriguing ethical questions. If consciousness in some form is present in all things, how should we treat nature and the universe as a whole? In this way, the philosophical arguments supporting panpsychism not only challenge us to rethink the boundaries between consciousness and matter, but also remind us of how little we truly know about our reality. And perhaps it's within this unknowing that the key to new discoveries lies. We've explored philosophical arguments and critiques of panpsychism, but how are these ideas reflected in popular culture? As it turns out, the notion of a conscious universe has long inspired books, films, and spiritual traditions, captivating millions and inviting us to ponder our place within the cosmos. One of the most iconic representations of this idea in art is Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. The film delves into the concept of the universe as a complex, living system. The artificial intelligence HAL 9000, while not part of the cosmos itself, embodies humanity's struggle to understand the boundaries of consciousness. The film's enigmatic ending, where the protagonist Dave undergoes a transformation and seemingly ascends to a higher plane of existence, leaves viewers questioning. What if the universe does possess a form of consciousness far beyond our comprehension? A related concept appears in the Gaia hypothesis, which portrays Earth as a massive, living organism. Popularized by James Lovelock, 
This idea resonates in both science and culture. Films like Avatar illustrate this through the planet Pandora, where all living entities are interconnected in a unified, intelligent system. Such narratives, inspired by panpsychism, raise the question, could our planet also harbor a form of awareness that we are simply unable to perceive? Reflections on a conscious universe are deeply embedded in many spiritual and religious traditions. Hinduism, for instance, introduces the concept of Brahman, a universal consciousness that permeates everything. Similarly, Buddhism speaks of interdependence, suggesting that every fragment of reality is intrinsically connected to the whole. These teachings, much like panpsychism, blur the boundaries between the material and the immaterial, proposing that consciousness might be a fundamental aspect of existence itself. Science fiction often explores these themes as well. Classic novels like Stanislaw Lem's Solaris imagine sentient planets capable of interacting with and influencing human thoughts and emotions. Such works challenge us to ask, what if forms of consciousness exist that are so alien to us, we fail to recognize them? It's as if they operate on a different frequency of reality, one we cannot yet tune into. The idea of a conscious universe not only inspires art and religion, but also serves as a reminder of the limits of our understanding. It creates a space where science, philosophy, and culture converge to explore questions that continue to intrigue and perplex us. Perhaps the answers are not as important as the journey itself, a journey that urges us to dream, to wonder, and to discover. We began this journey with a question, could the universe be conscious? After exploring science, philosophy, and popular ideas, it's clear that this hypothesis challenges us to rethink our place in the cosmos. If consciousness is a fundamental aspect of reality, then perhaps we are not just observers, but part of a much greater mind. Imagine this. What if we are never truly alone, even in solitude? If every particle in the universe holds some basic level of awareness, then perhaps everything around us carries a significance we have yet to comprehend. And now, a question for you. Do you think it's possible that the universe is aware of its existence? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'm eager to hear your perspective. Whether you approach this idea with skepticism or curiosity, one thing remains true. Contemplating such possibilities makes our reality even more extraordinary and filled with wonder. But before we part ways, let me leave you with a question that might just change the way you see reality. If consciousness is truly the foundation of all existence, then who are you in this grand design? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you found this intriguing. Let's continue exploring the mysteries of our existence together. See you in the next video.